Hello, I'm John and welcome to another live art tutorial where we introduce amazing and varied artists from around the world and ask them to share a few of their tips to help you improve your art. Today we're zooming to England to join wildlife artist Angela Gorgon uh, where we'll be spending some time with her as she progresses a painting of a young leopard cub. Uh, this short class is a short introduction to Angela who will be appearing at the Search Press Artist and Author Exhibition later this month. Uh, more on that later. So without further ado, let's introduce Angela to you now. Hello Angela, how are you? Hello, John. Very well, thank you. Good. I'm, I'm really looking forward to today. Um, and now I know you don't do online classes, but I'll be making <laughs> I'll be making sure things go smoothly today. And hopefully people who wouldn't normally be able to visit the UK will be able to benefit from some of your teaching. So I hope, I'm, I'm really looking forward to to a little introduction today. So that's going to be good. OK. <laughs> um, well, I can't wait to get started. Uh, before we do, uh, a 30 second word on how today's uh, live event is going to work. So first of all, um, Angela will walk through a little bit of a chat about the sketch and how she's done that and prepared it. Um, and then we're going to take a little bit of a pause in the middle. She might do the first layers of paint as well. Um, we'll take a little pause in the middle of the class um, just to talk about the patchings and search press event later this month and how you can attend that or join in. Um, and then we'll complete the tutorial at the end, after which um, you're more than welcome to share any paintings you do via this class or maybe your own other paintings of wildlife uh, on our Facebook page for comments and feedback. So Angela, um, I can see in front of you, I'll share everybody the, the sketch that you've done um, of, it's quite a detailed sketch, uh, of the leopard cub. Um, there it is. Doesn't that look absolutely gorgeous? I love <laughs> the expressive eyes. Um, how long did this take for you to get to this stage? Um, well, I start off with a with a graphite pencil and draw straight onto the canvas. Right. Okay. Um, and then I use an intense pencil, which I make a palette of. I scribble it onto a watercolor paper, and pick up with a wet brush and paint the darkest darks with a black, a black intense pencil. Okay. Okay. And when that's dry, and it must be dry, I've got to the stage where I'm at now. Okay, okay. So um so the ink tense pencil, is that the thing is that your go to piece of equipment for this type uh, of thing? Yes. All my paintings, and if you go onto my website you'll see the different sort of uh, work I do. Um uh, I start with a pencil sketch, which as you could probably see, um which is just graphic pencil, and then I use uh, an ink tense pencil, I do it, um, scribble it onto a piece of paper and pick it up as if it was paint with a damp brush. Um, I could try and show you here. Yeah, that'd be great. Any chance you could put the scrap of paper in front of the camera so we could see? Uh, well, it's oh. actually a pad of paper and I've got okay. all my paint resting on it. Okay, okay. don't worry, don't worry. But what, what I'll do is pick up what I can do. Hang on. Um, that's difficult to show. No if I go in with here, and draw a black line. You can see, I just picked the ink tents up. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so you've you've put the you've you've scribbled the pencil onto a piece of paper, and then you're yeah. using that scribbled thing. You're wetting it and then picking yes. it up with a paintbrush. Yes. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't pick it up because I've got all my little jam pots on it with paint. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. I don't want you to have any mishaps in your studio. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll, be... have a, we'll have a technicoloured leopard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so, uh, so okay, and why why ink tents? What do you find really great about that as a medium? Um, well, I could have gone in with black ink, uh, acrylic, but... For 20 odd years, I demonstrated for deal with pencils, and I absolutely love the intense range. Um, so I've got used to, by putting it onto paper, um, the, the, the paper absorbs some of the wet when you, you wet your brush and put it in, and you get a good strong dark, which is all I'm after. Right. At this stage of the painting. Um, it shows through. Um, it shows through the very many layers I do after with acrylic paints, I okay. don't lose that darkness. 
Okay, okay. okay. So um, once I it's tried... bonded, once it's bonded and dried, it, it really comes yes. through all the other layers that you put on top of it. Oh, yes, because all the colours I use, which is Winter and Newton um, Professional Acrylics, and I use transparent colours only for my washes. Um, as you could see, I thin the paint down can you see that yes i thin the paint down very very thin i put the tube color in the bottom a little bit of water i add some flow improver which is very important to stop the paint molecules breaking down then okay. fill up with tap water and it's ready to go and that would give me a lovely thin wash for the first wash i would be doing on the eye i use a lemon yellow for the first wash on the eye now you mentioned flow improver. Is that what it's actually called? As a, as a. Yes, you just. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you see oh, that? There you go. It's Winter yeah. Newton's flow improver. Yes. Okay. I've got, I've got the wrong angle, am I? And that just <laughs> makes the acrylic ink and the water and everything just mix together a bit better. Uh, well, it it stops the uh, paint molecules breaking down because with acrylic, if you use too much water then it starts to break down and you get little bits of paint and everything all floating about the place. So what it does, it, it helps the paint to bind together and you can go really thin to the te texture of watercolour. Mm. So when I do a wash over something, you can see what's underneath the paint as well. Yeah. Now, so Karen's asked, because um, she's got some of the ink tents, so she'll probably be doing the, the, the black like you've done, trying to do that in the ink tents but could she yeah. then use watercolor instead of acrylic over the top uh well you you can use watercolor if you're a watercolor painter but the problem is because i'm an indirect painter i use many layers and you can't do that many layers on top of watercolor because the underneath layers lift okay okay right. so the answer karen is yes but it might look a bit different <laughs> you could probably get away with two or three layers, yeah. um, but with, with you, uh, but after that, you'll probably start to turn to mud. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you know you can. You'd be surprised how many layers you can get in watercolor. Uh, we, we've done some botanical artists, and sometimes they can do like twenty-five different layers on the really, really? really incredible depth in the petals and everything. But uh, yes, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, it takes more time to to go through all those different layers but you do get a different feel from the painting yeah um, yeah yeah karen said hers always look different <laughs> from the, uh, right brilliant okay well that's that's good so and how long did it take you with your um first of all how long would it take to sketch this leopard cub initially before you put the ink tents on that can take me a day okay wow uh, okay if, if i'm doing a complicated painting um it usually takes me a few hours, put it that way, to do the sketch. And then I'll look at it for a while and I'll alter things. And I'll play around with it until I'm happy with it. Yes, OK. Uh, because I put so much detail. I mean, I haven't put much detail into this that I normally do. I usually like to get all the direction of the fur going exactly where I want it so that when I paint over the top, I can in paint in between paint the lines of my drawing to build up the paint. The only yeah. opaque paint I use is um, titanium white, but I'm putting the white of the fur in. Um, and my first layer I put down is usually gesso. Ah, okay, yes. White. And then after that, I'll be tinting it with coloured washes, and then I build up again. And the next layer then is, is titanium white. Okay, okay. And um, so it might take you a day to, to to sketch it out, and that's all in just pencil because then you can make the modifications that you need. Yes, you might think, yeah, oh, you, you, you can take your time, enjoy it, and then when you're happy with what you've done, I then go in with the ink tents just yes. to darken down all the darks. Got of course, you. for the leopard painter, there's a lot of darks. You've got all the spots. Yes. <laughs> so all the bits of, of the dark areas there, those have all been ink tents now. They're and... all ink tents. Yeah. OK. With, done and... with, a, with a damp brush. OK. And how, how long would that take? Maybe an hour or so, I guess. Yes. Yeah. 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 OK. And then you leave that to dry thoroughly and then, then oh, yeah. you're ready for the stage that we're sort of at now. That's right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Brilliant. 
And what we what we discussed, because obviously, Angela, it does take her quite a long time to do each one of her um, paintings. So what we talked about was maybe um, today in this short class to focus more around the eyes, that area. Yeah. We won't be able to do the entire cub, but it will give you a good feeling. And the eyes are the most expressive parts of an animal anyway. So that that hopefully will be really uh, enjoyable for you. Right, over to you then, Angela, on this on the first step once the ink tense has dried. Okay. Uh, right, the first step, I'm going to paint lemon yellow onto the eye. It's very, very pale wash. And I'm going over the whole eye. You can see how thin the colour is. Yeah. It's more... Oh, it's a little bit thicker. It's almost tinting the colour in. I'll do the other eye to match. It's just giving me a, a base that I can work the other colours into. I'll let that dry. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I will give him a little bit of a wash around. I'll just go up to the centre. And I'm using raw sienna for this, just to get some colour into him. And what kind of brush are you using for that? Is it like a flat it, head? Oh, it's, no, a it's, spiky, it's a spiky comber. Spiky, yeah, OK. Yeah. So, so that's probably quite good for the hairs or... Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It just puts the rough colour in where he's, he's darker. Just to start, I'm just doing this while the eyes are drying. Could use the hairdryer, but it's very noisy. It's a very, very slow way of working, but I enjoy it. It's very, uh, yeah, I bet it's very relaxing. It is. With all the troubles that are going on in the world, I can lock myself away and I thoroughly lose myself in the painting. I know. I do. Although she seems a little bit wooden, I do feel for Liz Truss taking over as the Prime Minister of our country with so many issues. Her in-tray must be absolutely heaving with issues to solve. So oh, good luck to her. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to be in her position. No, no, I wouldn't either. I'd better I'll be here painting. <laughs> My husband's <laughs> dancing around the kitchen trying to tell me something. I can't hear a word to say it. <laughs> It's just one sugar in my tea. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's a good idea, John. <laughs> okay, I've got to stop where I've gone so far because I've got to, the eyes are probably dry enough that I've to do the next wash. This is very basic, the first layers, but it gives you an idea where the colours are. He doesn't look quite so anemic. And how many, with with regards to the colour of the leopard, how 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 many layers would you maybe give on on the the coat of the leopard? Oh, it varies. It varies on each animal, really. On on this leopard, you probably do two two okay. layers. Okay. Okay. Um, if you go on to the website later on, you'll see I've done a painting uh, of a snow leopard, which only took two layers, and he's extremely detailed. Uh, but the opaque paint is done in between layers, if you know what I mean. So it very, you rarely, uh, it builds up gradually. It always looks a bit rough in the beginning then. Just want to get this off. 
hadn't tended to do too far. It'll be a start. He just looks pale. We've usually got more white than this, but this little one's quite raw sienna-ish. I'm even putting it into the white fur. Uh, just to, there it goes as low as I'll go, I think, for now. I'll stop at that now, because I think that's dry enough. I'm just going to give the eyes a blast of the head, right, to make sure they're dry. No problem. Excuse the noise. Just to let you know, Angela, the the um, the software automatically cuts out the sound of the hairdryer, so it's oh, okay. <laughs> so it's quite uh, it's quite good. Um, now, would you normally use a hairdryer if you were doing a painting, or would you let it yes. dry naturally? Uh, sometimes I'll have a cup of coffee, let it dry naturally. Sometimes, if I really want to get on with it, really I'll, I'll use it. the hairdryer. Yeah. Now I'm going to use blue. I can find my brush. That's it. Is. Go to use blue now, ultramarine blue to paint in the blue on top of the lemon to give it more greeny shade. Again, I'm going all over the eye. Just uh, a stronger at the top. It's better. I made the paint a little bit on the thin side by mixing by pre-mixing the colours yourself before you start. You can get the paint to the right consistency. Obviously, the darker colours are going in first. Right. Not too worried about the highlights. I'll put those in fresh later on when I use the opaque. I like to paint the eyes first because then you feel the animals alive. Take off what you don't want with a dry brush. Okay, that white later on. I'll let that dry. I have to use the hairdryer again, I'm afraid. No problem.
we go. A little bit of white gesso, I think, to lighten up a bit. Just a little. And this is the first, obviously, opaque colour I'm using. I'm just going to lighten areas that I want to lighten, which is around the edge here with some light in. And then tonk it. <laughs> you know what tonking is? And this one a little bit. So Karen's asked, why are you using gesso instead of titanium white? Um, I don't know. I think it's I think it's a little bit more, it sort of accepts the next layer of paint better. Um I normally gesso my canvas, and I didn't have time to gesso this canvas before I started, so I'm working on a raw canvas. So although it is prepared for paint, um, I just thought I'd make sure. I, 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 to be honest, it's cheaper because a large jar of gesso lasts me a long time. <laughs> first layer, I noticed with titanium white, if I put it on in the first layer, it sinks into the canvas a lot. So... The gesso gives a better sort of um, area. Now, I'm just going to blast that little bit with the hairdryer. Give them another wash of blue. Mary Ann's asked, do you ever paint on paper? And if so, what, what type do you use? Uh, I usually use the illustration board. Um, I used to use illustration board all the time at one point, but now I find I like working on canvas because I like the textures of it. Karen says she loves that little red hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says that. <laughs> <laughs> it's years old, actually. I've dropped it on the, the tile floor so many times, it's a wonder it still works. <laughs> it's funny to see the different hair dryers of different artists. I, I remember, I think it's, have you ever seen David Bellamy's hair dryer? It's, it's like a little duck. It's got a duck beak. Oh, really? Is the is the the blowing? Bit. Oh, lovely! Yeah. It's quite funny. I don't know where he got it from. <laughs> it's better. I like using transparent colours for the eyes because it makes them more translucent. And if you're using a paint colour. Be surprised how many colours are in an eye. And everybody's eyes are a different colour. I'll tip the white skin slightly blue as well of the eye. Now, just to let you know, we're sort of reaching the halfway stage. So if, if you okay. want to pick an appropriate time to to take a pause, just let me know. Okay. I never pause once I stop. I know. I know. <laughs> once I hard. start. <laughs> and if you don't let me know, I will let you know in about five okay. minutes. <laughs> that, that's good. <laughs> you see, I'm tinting the blue just slightly around, around the darker colour around the eye. Go. Karen's on fire today. She said, or you can take a pause, spelled P-A-W-S. Oh. <laughs> on fire, Karen. <laughs> Just going to dry again.
Okay. The next colour I'll use, which I've just spilt all over my lap, is going to be burnt sienna. And what I'm going to do with that is just tint the colour around the edges of the eye. Just make sure that's dry before you start, which it is. Just around the very edge near to the black. We're using a double O rigger brush now. Lenny asked, do you thin down the gesso when you put it on the eye? Sorry? Do you thin uh, down uh, no. the gesso? Um, I use uh, Winsor Newton's uh, artist quality acrylic gesso again, and it is quite thin. Okay. Um, it's a nice quality, actually. It, it just it's nice and smooth. I notice there's quite a lot of warmth in this little one's eyes in the shadows, probably reflected from somewhere. Karen said, "Wow, that burnt sienna made a real difference to the eyes." Uh, yeah, it's surprising how many colours you see in an eye. Yes. Uh, of course, everybody's is different. It's just that little edge. I think that's what um, I teach more than anything, is observation. I think we can all paint, but we can't all see. And I think um, I'm going to go back in with white gesso while I'm waiting for that to dry and re-highlight. you do a dot and a little line which most highlights are usually pale blue because they reflect the color of the sky with an animal let's leave that dry i think because it is i haven't eradicated brush if i put too much paint on i could just take a little bit off there we go Let that dry again. Now, is now a good time to take a little pause? Yes, if you like. Okay, perfect. That was really lovely, a really great first half. And thank you so much for for doing that. It really started to take shape, didn't it? It was really fascinating. And the different layers, especially when you're doing the eyes, as, as Angela said, it really does make a difference. And you can see all those different uh, colors involved in it. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube and you love what we're doing, uh, we both really appreciate you hitting the, the thumbs up. Um, YouTube then recommends this show to more people then uh, helping us with our mission, which is to inspire more people of any age to give art a try. Uh, so thanks in advance. Um, now, I promise to give you a bit more info about the event happening in uh, September. It's on the 23rd to the 25th, towards the end of this month. However, first, uh, on Friday, the 23rd of September, SKA are also hosting a live plen air event in Italy with the wonderful watercolour artist Keiko Tanabe, who will be travelling there from California, no less. Uh, we've had a chat with Keiko all about the live event and how you can order the video and even join in if you want. Um, she even shares one of her sketchbooks with us that she did when she was last in Italy. So make sure you watch our fireside chat. Uh, you can either click the pop out link, which will appear just here, um, or see the link in the description below. So Angela, back to you. Um, so towards the end of this month, we're, well, first of all, at Patchings, which is a festival in Nottinghamshire. You're displaying some of your art at the moment. Um, and then towards the end of this month, you're actually going to be giving a demo. I think, is it on the Friday, the 23rd? Yes, yes it yeah. is. So yeah. if you happen to live uh, in or near uh, Nottinghamshire, or if you want to book a plane ticket and fly over for patchings. Um, it'd probably be quite a big investment, but um, but you, you know, if you happen to uh, want to come and have a look, there's a lot of different artists presenting. Um, and what art have you actually got displaying at the event? 
Um, I've got 10 paintings. I've got a snow leopard, a tiger. Um, oh, they're quite large paintings as well. Um, I've got polar a bears. pride, a polar bears. Oh, right. Uh, a polar bear, uh, which is called the kiss because there's two young brothers uh, playing in water and they're leaping out to the water. and It looks like they give each other a kiss. That's my interpretation. <laughs> Um, and, and do you sometimes do you do you work off do you always work off photos with your art or do you sometimes yes. combine uh, no. photos to create a scene? Uh, no, I started off <clears throat> when I was quite young as a portrait painter, and I worked in many mediums, oils, uh, um, so it went on. Um, later in life, I got into see wildlife because they're losing their homes uh, because of the changing. The, heating the planet and everything. And I thought it's nice to, let's see the beauty of the animals while we've still got them. Uh, I find that, sorry, what, what, what were you, you asking me? No, it's just working off photos and everything. And how, what oh, yes. inspires you with the subjects or the photos well, that you use? What Mike and I go around the zoos oh, uh, and okay. do a shoot, photographing the, the, the animals live. I try and get them young if I can, if not the, the older ones. Um, and then we go through the photographs later on. I mean, sometimes I can take up to 250 photographs, uh, pick out something I like, and then I'll start sketching them out. And I'm usually working on about five paintings at the same time. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, if Mike could bring me uh, the one from the, the other room with the butterfly, um, to show you how it might be worth you having a look at it if I can get it up to the camera. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, how, how with the method I work, the drawing always shows through. Uh, Mike's going to pass me this painting now. I sprung this on in. Can you see it? Yes, yeah. If you look at his forehead, you can see the drawing is still there, but I've built the opaque up in between the drawing to sort of make the layers work. And if I try and move the can it around, you can see I painted the butterfly on his paw. Oh, lovely, yeah. Um, and the drawing on the rock is actually the intense showing through the thin layers of blues and greys. Right, right. Okay. That does so work that, really well, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, so that shows, I'm going to pass it back to Mike before I smash the camera. <laughs> Okay, and that was only two washes of colour on top. Right. Um, and then the white building up the texture. Yeah, that that's fascinating. It did work really, really well. And these paintings at Patchings are they are the, are they for sale? So can people? Oh purchase? yes, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, they're all for sale. Great, great. And uh, if you're watching this and you don't happen to be going to Patchings or can't make it to the UK and you are interested in uh, purchasing one of, uh, and we'll, we'll put a, a link so you can see some of the paintings, do get in touch with us and we can put you in touch with Angela um, or you can go to her website and have a look. Um, so, uh, oh, hang on a minute, I can see something else up there. Let's have a look at that. That's my book. Ah, right. And this is the Angela's art, book. The Art of Angela Gore. And uh, inside there, it shows all the methods that I'm talking about. How I start, how I pre-mix my colours, how I uh, put flow improver in and all the rest. Right. Everything I do is in the book. Okay, perfect. So that's a good a good uh, tip as well. And that's published by Search Press, which is why, um, and if you go to Search Press's website, um, you can find uh, Angela's book there as well. And if you happen to want to meet Angela and uh, actually uh, sketch and paint with her in a demo, uh, she's doing that on the 23rd of September. Now we are also going to be, hopefully, going to be doing a, a backstage pass virtual thing with patching so that you can go and have a look at the, some of these different events. Um, and we haven't got it totally finalised yet on what the itinerary is. We are going to be hosting David Bellamy on the Saturday um, and that's going to be a, a virtual demo uh, which we will be showing 
within the patchings uh, demo tent or exhibition thing and people will be painting along but I'll be hosting him uh, uh, virtually uh, from his home studio um, so if you do want to find out more about that you can either go to our live events page on our website um, the probably the best thing to be kept up to date is if you subscribe to our newsletter which again is free um, and on our home page it says newsletter sign up and you can then just sign up there and we'll make sure that we keep you informed of exactly what's going on right Angela back to the second half let's um, okay and let's continue adding more depth and but I mean it's it's a, a wonderful uh, subject I think uh, I'm just going to tint his nose. I know I said I was doing the eyes, so I'm just going to put some burnt sienna on his nose, but he's looking very grey. Bring a bit of life to that nose. Yes. Um, you can see the paint I use is very, very thin, but it just gives that little bit of... And I will put colours into it later on. Let that dry. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to tint in some Alizean Crimson into his mouth. Now we're going to go into his lips, which is quite to cover up what I'd already done, the shadows, his little mouth. Just his tongue. To start. A little bit stronger, maybe. That's just the start of the mouth tinting. And then I'll go put some blue onto his the skin around the mouth. On top of the dark. Go over the highlights. Just that lip part there. Leave that dry. I'm going to go back to the eyes, I think, and put a little bit more. Blue. This time, not taking it all the way down, just keeping it ad underneath the top half of the eye. Take off what I don't want. Soften it. Soften the highlight. It's a, it's a process of putting on and lifting off. Just clean the highlight. It's a bit, bit brighter. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I might just sort of give him another wash on his body. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I did say I was already going to work on the eyes, but <laughs> having said that... Uh, oh, you're getting into it now, you see. And <laughs> I am, yes. <laughs> In fact, you could do with a wash all over now. So then I can work the white into that. So if I do a very pale, what I've done is already dry. So I go over the whole animal now, not worrying where the paint is or where it's not. Because I the, the next layer would be to go 
with white, all the white hairs building up. So he will look all yellow for a while. But then I will build up the white. Okay, so at the back now. I'm not worried about going over the white areas because I just have you working into that. And you can't pick white on white, so you need a base colour to work into anyway. So that's a bit. Let's see that a bit. Okay, dry that off. Let's have a uh, that on properly. Pay that a little bit. Use the hairdryer now, again. I'm now going to uh, go in with the white opaquely and start painting the hairs. I use a double O rigger. I go into where the white fur is to start with, or the lighter parts. I think I could use a bigger brush. I'm using a spiky comb here again. Be quicker.
by putting the gesso down, it gives you a good base to work into later on. Always be aware of the direction the hair is growing. If you go in the opposite direction, it won't look right. <laughs> Really, it's a slow process of just building up texture and feeling your way around the animal. And working between your drawing lines so that you could build up a natural looking fur. Susie's asked, how do you protect your brushes from the acrylic drying on them? Uh, I've got a pot of water. I just I stand them in the water until uh, wipe the excess paint off and stand them in water until I pick it up again. Okay. And then at the end of class, I will wash them in hot soapy water. And put them in a pot to dry. They're fairly straightforward. Yes. <laughs> It's the opaque colour builds up the texture and all the, the pre uh, mixed washes are transparent colours. I think what the most important thing to learn is your transparent colours and your opaque colours so that you can use them to their advantage. This method isn't that far from how the old masters used to work. They would do a detailed drawing and then only if they were working in oils, they would use transparent colours to go over a tonal drawing and then build up with uh, opaque paint. At a later stage in the painting, I use my uh, medium, which I mix up myself, which is one part. I can show you the, the jar. Can you see the jar there? Which is yep. one part flow improver, three parts retarder, and eight parts water which I paint over the whole subject and then work into it when I want to really start refining the painting towards the very end. Okay. But that comes at a much later stage towards the finishing of a painting. How much that I would love to just continue sitting here watching in this hypnotic state, watching <laughs> Angela painting along uh, as she's keeping on tinkering with her uh, leopard cub. We're going to have to bring this to a close. But what did what did you think of today? Uh, how, how did you get on if you were uh, painting along a little bit? I uh, would love to know. Um, and as we near the end of this show, if you've got any words of thanks that you'd like me to pass on to Angela, now is your chance to write that down in the uh, Q&A. Um, then also, uh, as I said, Andrew and I'd love to see what you've done from the class today and maybe even if you've done um, some wildlife paintings at some point in the past maybe share those as well uh, the the post on facebook is already there so go on to facebook search for shopkeep arty um, and it's towards the top there and just add your comment with your paintings or maybe a comment about uh, the class today and what you thought about it it's always nice to hear from people and if you see other paintings that other people have shared that you really like give them a little thumbs up like or make a comment about it it's a nice 
community thing that we've got going on. Right, we are unfortunately uh, bringing things to a close. I, I, I think you're going to be left uh, doing this when we leave, aren't you, Angela? You're going to just keep yes. on working on it for the rest of the day. <laughs> Probably for the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've... Has, has the cub already got a name? Has the cub got a name? That's what I want to know. Oh, no. He, I, I, I will... I know. He hasn't yet. Unless you can think of one on the spot. Oh. Uh, How about Oscar? Let's go for it. Oscar. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Leo, the, but that's Leo oh, the lion, isn't it? Yeah, but, yes. Um, <laughs> That's probably the wrong one. Um, let me just uh, focus on you and I'll just give you a few comments that people have said. So Susie said, it was relaxing, lovely painting. Thank you for all the tips, helpful tips, Angela. Uh, Victoria said, beautiful work. Thanks, Angela and John. Uh, Karen said, oh, wow, it was so interesting and a beautiful painting. Watching Angela was hypnotic, loved it. Thank you, Karen. And Lenny said, thank you, Angela. I love what you're doing and your concern for wildlife. Uh, so that that's great. Um, Lava said, quite interesting to see how you build up layers to create texture. Love the eyes. Uh, and Carl said, thank you, John and Angela. This type of mixed media painting drawing is new to me and I'll definitely continue to pursue it. Um, so some lovely comments there. Uh, so... Thank you very much for uh, your time for joining us today on this uh, on this live webinar. It's been really fascinating, and I think maybe at some point, uh, if we get lots of positive comments on Facebook, we, we'll ask Angela to come back in the future, and maybe she'll feel brave enough to do a workshop with us. She, she ha hasn't done any online things, but I, I'm hoping we can we can seduce her over to the dark side. <laughs> if anybody can, you can, John. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. Angela. So um, so until next time, it's been uh, lovely to uh, have you here. Remember to check out that um, live fireside chat with Keiko because that was fascinating. But until next time, and I hope you can obviously join us at Patchings towards the end of September. 23rd is when Angela's going to be there. Uh, but you can see Angela's work throughout the whole of September at Patchings uh, and um, even purchase something if you if you fancy it until next time it's obviously a goodbye from me but obviously thank you so much for your time and generosity today to Angela thank you Angela thank you and as you've shared that with us for the first time you get a big round of applause <laughs> Okay, thanks, Angela. Take care. Thanks a lot, John. <laughs> All the best. Bye. Bye. It's, uh...